I'm actually really glad that we waited a little bit to make this tier list video because recently there have been some pretty fire mouse releases, even mice that I haven't had time to review just yet, but I am currently working on them. But I figured since we have a really good few options that are available very early in the year of 2022, as well as all the mice releases that we had last year in 2021, I figured this would be the perfect time to do a tier list video going over some of the best mouse choices for the beginning of the year and depending on what you're looking for. What's up guys, welcome back to Too Much Tech and thank you guys for checking out today's video. Before we go any further with the tier list though, because we are gonna hop right into it with this video, I do wanna introduce the sponsor of today's video, Jawa.gg. The company was founded by a group of gamers that was just not happy with the current marketplace and experience of buying and selling PC parts. Jawa is a non-predatory marketplace that easily allows you to list your GPU, any other PC parts, as well as gaming consoles that you may or may May not want or need anymore especially with today's market everything is changing at rapid paces so we like to upgrade frequently depending on who you are or even if you're just getting started and you're looking for something a little bit more reasonable it's very hard to find a place that has your best interest at heart the site is community driven so the ceo as well as the other staff members are very active in their discord so if you need help on finding what a fair listing price for a product is they can definitely help you with that the marketplace on java is vetted to make sure that the sellers and listings are in line with the company values of Jawa. That means no scalping is allowed and they make sure that you have a good understanding of the condition of the parts that you're listing so that the customer that buys them knows that they're getting a fair deal. And the sellers get a great deal out of this as well because the listing fees on Jawa are just 6.5%, some of the lowest that you're going to find out there for reselling. Check out Jawa.gg at the first link in the description below, but that's not all. We're also going to be giving away a Logitech G Pro Superlight to one of you guys. So Jawa is also sponsoring this giveaway and there's going to be a gleam link in the description below with tasks that you can do for multiple entries into the giveaway so not only that i'm going to be throwing in some pulsar super glide glass gates for the g pro wireless as well so you guys will have a nice mouse as well as some of the best mouse feet on the market some of the graphics card prices have been dropping recently so the availability is a little bit better but i mean on this website you're even going to find some rare stuff like this 3070 ti founders edition for 800 which is a really good deal honestly i'm even tempted myself to pick this up right now before somebody else buys it because if you've been looking for a founders edition graphics card they're not available like at all like they're extremely hard to find. This is a great alternative to some of the other popular options out there, and I'm definitely gonna be listing things on there myself. But thank you again to Jao for sponsoring this video, and be sure to check out their website as well as their Discord that I will have linked in the description below. And also, don't forget to check out the giveaway for that Logitech G Pro Superlight. So hopping right into the tier list video, let's go ahead and start off with a, a mouse that I recently reviewed. This is the Alienware, I think it's like the 720M or something like that. More or less, this mouse is shaped very similarly to the Logitech G Pro X Superlight. And uh, it has some like pretty similar features to like the original G Pro, like having like the buttons on the side and all that stuff. And it had like Bluetooth and USB Type-C and magnetic charging, all types of crazy stuff. But it was heavy. It was expensive and it also blew up. So um, I can't place this thing anything higher than garbage because look, even if I didn't read the instructions and I plugged the ports into the wrong port, if I plug something into the wrong port, the mouse just shouldn't work. It shouldn't days later, the dongle shouldn't explode. Okay, that, that should not happen. And Dell is working on it. I did send the mouse back so they could do some R&D and check it out. But that just cannot happen ever because it's a fire hazard and it's dangerous. What if somebody bought that mouse for their kid? You know what I'm saying? So garbage tier, don't buy that mouse. Won't be a link in the description for it. Just to let you guys know. Moving on. Let's talk about uh, the Fnatic Bolt Wireless. So I would have put this in the go to tier, but I can't quite put it there because I've heard uh, some reports of people having some build quality issues out of some of the first batches. And the reviewers, I didn't mention this in my review, i am be completely honest with you guys, I've been really busy recently and it completely slipped my mind when I, was, when I was filming because I wanted to make the review like pretty short and concise. But the review units were all like pre-inspected and the boxes were like opened and whatnot. So I can't place it in the go to tier because apparently they didn't have enough faith 
to just send the reviewers, you know, factory copies of the mouse and retail copies that the customers are going to be receiving. So with that being said, after hearing some reports of like some minor quality issues and it's not a perfect product, I'm gonna have to go ahead and throw it in the S tier, not the go to tier because the mouse is still good. My copy was fine, even though it was inspected, but we'll see how it does over time. Because realistically speaking, it's a significantly cheaper Logitech G Pro wireless alternative for half the price, essentially. Now, the Logitech G Pro Superlight has been on sale recently, but on the off chance that it's not on sale for 20 to $30 off, and you're paying full price at 169, which Logitech also raised, well, the Fanatic Bolt Wireless starts looking like a much, much better deal. And for half the price, I would rather buy two of them and take my chances on one of them failing than just buy one Logitech G Pro Super Lite, especially because it comes with better switches and it also comes with uh, more features like Bluetooth. I got a few SteelSeries mice on this list. So let's start. Let's talk about the Aerox 3. The Aerox 3, from what I've heard, has been updated since we initially reviewed it. And it sounds like it's been updated a couple of times. But the problem with the Aerox 3 is it hasn't been updated in the ways that I really want, which most importantly is the side buttons. They're still tiny and skinny and not easy to hit. So I'm going to have to throw this in like the... Mm, I don't have to throw it in the B tier because of the shape, because I feel like this is such a huge miss for SteelSeries. They easily could have destroyed the Endgame Gear XM1 wireless years before it came out, years, but they didn't. This mouse has a very similar feel in the hand to an XM1, and it was wireless, and they have like other ones, like they have one that I think uses batteries, and they have a rechargeable one for like 100 bucks, but the side buttons are so small, they're just horrible. And initially, the mouse skates were really bad. They were really scratchy. But apparently that's been fixed, to my knowledge, with the multiple versions that they've come out with since. So I'm not going to hold that against it anymore. But the side buttons, I definitely will. Those side buttons are trash. I can't put this mouse any higher than B. As recently, it's been on sale for a pretty fair price, in my opinion, because $100 was kind of a reach. I thought that $80 was a bit more fair for the wireless rechargeable one. And the one that had batteries, if that still exists, should have existed in the first place. So the Aerox 3 lineup of mice goes in the B tier. The uh, Arrival 600 and 650. I don't know why SteelSeries hasn't refreshed this mouse yet, made a lightweight version, and made a wireless version for like 100 bucks. No idea why, because it was like such a good ergonomic mouse that had three side buttons. Why haven't we dropped the ability to add weights, changed the build materials to be something that are similar to the Aerox 3, and had another mouse in a similar form factor with three side buttons? Like, why is that so hard to make? I just don't understand. I would love this mouse to come out if it just came out like yesterday. I think there was like rumblings of like an Aerox 600 mouse or something like that that was like supposed to be similar to that but i don't think it happened so uh yeah i'm just really curious as to what's going on with this mouse and definitely not the rival 5 because the rival 5 i'm thinking like all right that might be like the spiritual successor that's like slightly more lightweight but that mouse was horrible it had a third mouse button but it was more like a trigger and it was in the complete wrong place and it was hard to hit and I think there was like extra buttons on there or something like that. Like the RGB and everything looked great. The design and everything looked cool and it felt nice in the hand as far as the grip. But when you actually try to use the extra buttons, it was horrible. Garbage tier for sure. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Razer. Let's talk about Razer, the Death Adder. I like the Death Adder. I really do. Uh, they came out with the Death Adder V2 Pro wireless that had like the charging dock and all that stuff. Overall, I think the Death Adder is very good, has a cult-like following for the shape, which seems like that cult is getting smaller and smaller each day because we have a lot of competitive options these days that I really feel like the Death Adder is like a good entry-level mouse, but no one that I know that still plays PC games today stays using the Death Adder as their main mouse. Like, I, I don't know anybody that mains the Death Adder beyond like the first like year or two that they play games on PC. So I just, I, I, I don't see that mouse on anybody's desk when they, you know, get their elite PC gaming setup and all that stuff set up. It's always something different and the Death Adder 
always ends up in the drawer. So with that being said, I don't think the Death Adder really deserves to be in this uh, high tier area. It's mid at best. The Razor Viper though, I mean, realistically speaking, the Razor Viper is pretty nice. It had that charging dock, is ambidextrous, Viper Ultimate, uh, which is the one I obviously I was talking about. But uh, you also had the Wired Viper that's been on sale for who knows how long, for like 50 bucks, which is a really good deal. Um, and they had the one with the 8,000 kilohertz and also the Viper Mini. So I don't know, Viper Mini being as low as like 20 bucks, which for sure, without a doubt, absolute best mouse that you can get for 20 bucks, especially if you have small hands. I mean, yeah, I would definitely place the Viper in the go to tier for sure because it's just been such a rock solid product ever since it came out initially. And I can't really talk bad about the Viper at all. It may not have worked perfectly for me as far as uh, the sizing, and I do wish the side buttons were a little bit bigger, but I don't know, those leaks of that new Viper v2 pro whatever they decide to call it that mouse looks absolutely amazing and if everything on the box leak that they showed comes to fruition ooh, it's gonna be nice it's gonna be nice but I, again even though they removed the buttons on the right side of the mouse and just made it like a purely right-handed mouse with buttons on the left side and it doesn't have the charging dock anymore supposedly if they increase the size of those side buttons mint absolutely mint the razor rochi v2 we really thought that this mouse was gonna be the successor to the logitech g pro no not g pro yeah the regular logitech g pro uh that was wired or most importantly the logitech g305 which is wireless but it had a battery and it was also kind of expensive because it was like 50 bucks uh for a mouse with a battery that was wireless i mean come on man like 50 dollars uh, but uh, this one, it, they went complete left field with this. It was $80, wasn't the same shape that we thought it would be, but it's, you know, it's a nice small mouse, I think. I think the coating is nice and it was customizable and all that stuff, but $80, absolutely not. $50, I mean, let, let, me, let me check Amazon. Let me see what the current price is of the uh, Orochi V2. All right, here we go. It's not 80 bucks anymore. Like I believe it launched at, either launched at 70 or 80 bucks. 50 bucks is much more reasonable. So as long as it stays at $49, I really don't have much of an issue with the uh, Orochi V2 at that price because uh, I don't know why Razer says it's a 60 gram ultra light uh, mouse because it excludes the battery and you need a battery to use the mouse. So this mouse will never be 60 grams unless you, I don't know, unless you use an invisible battery that doesn't weigh anything. That's the only way that mouse would ever be 60 grams. So. It just doesn't work. B tier, Orochi V2 is mid. Then we've got the Razer Basilisk. Realistically speaking, I'd rather use the Razer Basilisk than use the Logitech G30, no, no, the Logitech G502, because the 502 is just too complicated, too many buttons, and it's heavy as a brick. It's not going down. I'd rather use the Basilisk all day if I played MMOs or if I had um i played a game where i really really needed three side buttons i would choose the basilisk every time over the g502 and even though the g502 is a top selling mouse and you gotta pay his respect i wouldn't rate it nearly as high as the basilisk since we were talking about logitech and the g502 we might as well move into the logitech section of the video so the g502 well this mouse does not have a place that's very near and dear to me in my heart. And I wouldn't call it a trash product, but it is bad. And the reason why I say that it's bad is because a lot of people buy this mouse, they have it and they swear by it. I'm not one of those people. I, I don't care at all about the G502, but the shape is not terrible like it's, it's designed ergonomically like it's designed like a transformer that fits your hand and it, it is fairly comfortable just to hold but when you move it is where you know the problems start because it's like a break it's like 110 grams or something crazy like that why logitech hasn't weight reduced this mouse blows my mind to be like 80 or 90 grams at least please weight reduce also upgrade the mouse case to ptfe that would make such a huge difference if they just upgraded the mouse feet you got this heavy mouse that's gliding on these old garbage skates. They need to upgrade those like yesterday. So with that being said, the G502 is bad. I wouldn't recommend it or buy it. 
And then we also had the G703, which we're waiting for an upgrade from this mouse. I would rather use this, because I think it's like 90 grams or something like that. I'd rather use this than a G502 all day if I'm looking for an ergonomic Logitech mouse in specific, but where is the G703 light speed? Like, are we ever gonna get that mouse? Because a lot of people have been asking for it and they made a G Pro Super Light. Where is the Super Light version of the G703? I think I would rather use that instead of the G Pro Super Light if it was available because the G703, in my opinion, is more comfortable. I like the shape better. So with that being said, I do like the G703, but I wish that they would update the mouse, add better mouse switches, add better skates, and also be weight reduced speaking of which the g305 um well this mouse uh, we're gonna save this one for last we'll come back to that one the g303 shroud edition so this mouse is very interesting because the shroud edition mouse the shape of the mouse forces you to play claw grip and claw grip is not for everyone like i like claw grip a lot but i don't like it when i grab the mouse and i feel like i don't have any flexibility when it comes to the grip that i choose like i usually like to use something that's more similar to g305 where i can use a relaxed claw grip because that just is more comfortable to me and i can kind of move my hand placement around depending on how intense the gaming session is at that specific moment if i'm not in an intense moment and i'm just looting or something like that for example in a game i don't think i need to be in like a full 100 percent claw grip with the best aim because i don't really need to aim to pick up a gun in warzone or in fortnite or whatever like it's not that steep if i'm just farming mats or something in fortnite but um the g303 is like the 100 percent ready all the time kind of gaming mouse like with this mouse your aim is always going to be sharp you're always going to be on point with this mouse because my aim was really good when i used it but it just wasn't very comfortable for long periods of time so i just was not personally a fan of the g303 but i do understand uh the importance of this mouse and it works perfectly for shroud it's got his name in it but I think if I would have tried the original G303, I think I would have liked it more. With the changes that Shroud made, I'm glad that he has a mouse that's made specifically for him, but I don't really think it's as widely recommendable as I would like it to be. Next, we have the regular Logitech G Pro Wireless, and this thing is like 80 or 85 grams. It's pretty heavy, and the clicks on it are pretty bad because you also have like the double clicking issue and you more or less, you gotta upgrade everything on this mouse. Like you gotta weight reduce it, you gotta upgrade the mouse feet and all that crazy stuff. And you gotta swap the mouse switches too if you want them to last a long time. Otherwise you gotta RMA it. Forget it, man. I'm not buying a regular Logitech G Pro wireless. It's just not going down. I remember when I tried it and I was like, mm, I don't get the hype at all. This thing is trash. No absolutely not i could not recommend a thing to anyone even if it's on sale for 80 or 100 bucks i would i would rather not get it i would rather just get the fanatic bolt if i'm looking at the regular logitech g pro wireless now when it comes to the g pro super light well i'm gonna be honest i've been using this mouse in its uh stock condition with the excuse of the mouse skates for the better part of a year and a few months, okay? This mouse is so good, it has not left my desk for an extended period of time until recently, but we'll get to that in a second. But the G Pro X Super Lite that we're also giving away in this video is such a good mouse in the stock configuration with the exception of the mouse skates. The mouse skates that Logitech gives you, they wear pretty quick. I swapped them to core pads, I was absolutely fine but now I'm rocking the uh, Pulsar Super Glide skates. And those things are absolutely amazing. We'll talk about those later. But anyways, G Pro X Super Lite, great mouse, great weight, incredibly balanced as well. The mouse clicks are really good as well too because they're very light and spammable. They're really, really good. I really don't have any complaints with the G Pro Super Lite in its current condition. And I even wonder how it could be improved other than just swapping the switches and the skates. But it is pricey. And that's the thing. And that's why the Bolt is a very nice alternative to the G Pro Super Lite. Quality thing, yeah, but I digress. G305. So the G305, I like this mouse. I like the shape. It, you know, it's the same shape as the G Pro Wired and all that, but it's just wireless. But it's also 80 grams, which is the same weight as the G Pro Wireless, but the mouse is smaller. Now it's made for more of like claw grip slash relaxed claw grip. 
uh, and depending on like how big your hand is, maybe a palm grip. But Logitech, honestly speaking, never updated this mouse. Like this mouse has been on sale recently for like 40 to $50, but you need a battery for it to be wireless. The connection is rock solid, so I can't really harp on that. The side buttons are great, the shape is great, but this mouse needs to be weight reduced, needs a rechargeable battery, and yeah, and maybe better switches. Weight reduced, rechargeable battery, better switches. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I would ask for from the G305 before it to be turned into a G305 Lightspeed. Like, when is that coming out? Logitech, you guys are slacking, slacking. When is that mouse coming out and gonna be available? Well, technically, it's already out, because I have it. And I've been using it for a while. So this is, uh, oh, let me go back to my, okay, cool, I saved the list, dang. I hit the side mode by accident. <laughs> but this is the Game Vision's Orbit. And since I got this mouse like last like week, week and a half ago, I have not put this thing down. And it is the hugest disappointment to me that Logitech didn't make this mouse like a year ago, two years ago because it's so good and it, this is not a one-to-one -one of the g305 like it's actually a little bit bigger um but it's very i'm fine with that because my hands are kind of big but i'm fine with it because this thing is so nice to use and my aim has been so good recently i just feel extremely comfortable using this game Vision's orbit and i believe it's only like 70 or 80 dollars as well so i think honestly it's fairly priced for what it is i think that once it's been out for a while and it's not brand new i think it's going to drop from that 80 dollar price tag to about like 70 or 65 bucks i think that would be an incredible deal especially because of the shape and just the fact that logitech has this mouse or the you know the underpinnings of it but they never updated it to be modern like this thing has usb type c has klgm 8.0s and the top shell even comes off so you can replace it with the other colors that they have i just have the orange but they have a white one so you can buy a couple of them and swap the shells of the uh, mouse clicks and the back and you could have like a two-tone mouse that looks really cool so yeah, the Game Vision's Orbit, this thing is great. Great wireless receiver as well. I haven't had any connection issues. And that's pretty much it. This mouse is from a brand new company. It's their first product, and I'm pretty happy with it. I don't really have much bad to say about it. So we've also got the uh, Final Mouse Starlight 12. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This is a good product, okay? I really can't complain. The mouse is good. Now, they have had some QC issues and whatnot that I have heard, so it's not perfect but for a mouse to be innovative and use an entirely new build material for a gaming mouse that we have not seen before incredibly lightweight magnesium and have a small and medium-sized mouse under 50 grams is insane and using it i played really well even though it wasn't the most comfortable because it was a little bit small for my taste once they make a large one, I'll probably buy it, okay? I'll probably buy it. I was very close to buying a medium-sized one like a few months ago for like 250 bucks, but but it's too small and I said, for me to pay $250 for this to sit in a drawer is not gonna happen. If I had smaller hands, I probably would be using it right now, but I don't. So I'm waiting for them to make a large one. Then maybe I'll pay a slight aftermarket upcharge. Not much, not much. Like I'm talking about covering your shipping and gave you extra 10 bucks, bro. Because aftermarket use mice, come on, bro, no, not going down. But other than the hype factor of the final mice, the innovation portion for the large part is where I would put them in the S tier, doing what the other companies aren't doing. Speaking of which, EVGA tried to make it Logistic G502 and make it faster by adding 8,000 hertz killer, uh, uh, 8,000 hertz polling rate. No, no, you guys, just just make the gpus maybe experiment the motherboards a little bit here and there heck i don't even care if you guys made ram but gaming mice y'all don't need to be making gaming mice let's talk about rocket though i like rocket but I, I don't know what they're doing right now like this burst pro and burst core came out like a year and a half ago and we don't have a wireless one yet like where is the wireless version of the burst mouse I thought that this was a great alternative to an in-game gear XM1 and it had like the optical clicks and everything. And granted, the clicks were a little bit stiff, but most importantly, even if they change the clicks back to mechanical, where is the wireless one? Because this mouse in most aspects, like the weight, has some of the best mouse feet on any gaming mouse on this list. And the cable was fantastic. 
And don't get me wrong, the cable is so good, it doesn't really need to be wireless, you can just use a mouse bungee. But they don't give you a mouse bungee in the box. If they gave you a mouse bungee in the box, that would be different. They could kind of sell me on the whole, you know, hey, we gave you everything you need for it not to be wireless. No, no, bro. Where is the wireless version? This is 2022. The wireless version would be great for like 20 to $30 more than the current one. And then, you know, on sale, of course, and be around like 60, 70 bucks for a Burst Pro Wireless or whatever. Where is that mouse? We need it, we want it, make it. Tension the clicks a little bit lighter and you're in business. Come on guys, come on. Comb Pro Air, I like the Comb Pro Air a lot. This is a really good mouse, 75 grams. I do wish it was a little bit lighter. You know, I would bump it up, but it also does have Bluetooth and all that good stuff. And again, best mouse case on any mouse on this list because they're the same as the, the uh, Burst Pro. But uh, I, I, I kind of want to see a little bit lighter version of this, especially once we tar start talking about some of the ergo mice on this list that are lighter than the Cone Pro Air. Now this mouse should be a review up on the channel, if not already, very soon. This is the Marvel Fit Pro. And more or less, this mouse is pretty interesting. I mean, more or less you get a G Pro, wait, I almost said super light. You get a G Pro Wireless Mini and a G Pro Wireless in one mouse. So you get both sizes in one mouse, which is pretty crazy, right? Right? But not that crazy when it has bad skates, weird side buttons, uh, a lot of weight that you're moving around, and it's also like 110 grams. So, so the concept of this mouse is really nice. I like what they were trying to do, even the uh, renders and design, and in real life, it looks decent, but not gonna save you from the fact that it still feels like a cheap product. Now, speaking of mice that look like the Logitech G Pro, uh, the uh, G Wolf's Hottie S. Okay, so this is a nice mouse, but I've given away a couple of them and both people that won them told me that they started having some QC issues after a few months of owning the mouse. And for the prices that they were charging for the Hottie S wireless, have like over a hundred dollars and I don't know if they're back in stock or not. I know they go in and out of stock for a while, but the batches that they've been working on, apparently they haven't been holding up after months. Like initially using them for a few weeks at a time, I haven't had any issues with them, but it looks like after a few months, if the mouse doesn't work or it falls apart or something like that, that's not good. Now, I don't know if these people are like smacking the mice on the table and then they crumble in their hands or something like that, but but, but, we want to make sure that the durability is absolutely top tier. We know the gamers get a little mad. We know that. So you got to make it durable, okay? Then we have the uh, G Wolves HSK. Well, it's a fingertip only mouse. I don't think it has side buttons either from what I remember. And it was pretty weird. Like maybe this could work if you have tiny hands, but this mouse is just a little bit too niche for me to just openly recommend to anyone. I'm like, you, you gotta be really looking to do fingertip only and have no support behind your fingertips for the rest of your hand at all. And that's just weird. So I don't know who would buy this, not sure. Then we got the Vanser Gretza. Well, this Vanser Gretza is pretty nice. I wanna say it was like 70 grams or something like that. And it's very similar to like the Starlight 12 medium, but it was also, uh, no, less than half the price. I think it was like 60 bucks or 70 bucks. So that's less than $180 or $190 plus shipping. And it was pretty decent build quality. Didn't have any complaints. It had KLG M8.0s, .0s, no issues with the wireless connection. I would say that's an A tier mouse if you're looking for something that feels very similar in a hand to the final mouse and is plastic and also heavier, albeit substantially heavier, you know, it's like 70 grams. So it is fine, it works. Is it my favorite mouse? And would I pick this mouse over like a Cone Pro Air? No, not for my hand size, but it was okay. I didn't have any issues with it. Let's talk about Extra Fine, the M4 Wireless. Um, honestly, I would say this mouse is mid at best. The M4 regular is better. I would put that closer to the A tier. But this thing, with me having uh, two units sent to, no, I think I had one unit sent to me initially, and then they sent me two more. One of them I gave away that I left in the exact condition that they gave it to me. The other one, I tried to swap the front shell again, and that thing just pissed me off. Like, you try to swap the front shell to the different colors or whatever, or even just take it off and put it back on. And literally, the mouse clicks would get stuck. So 
I mean, yeah, that, that to me, that's unacceptable, which if that wasn't an issue, I would put it probably in the B tier or maybe even the A tier of mice. Like if there was a B plus tier, that's probably where I would put it because it's decent. More or less, it's an upgrade to the M4. Um, and you know, it feels good in the hand. And I like the fact that they added that additional back piece, which was fine. You know, you can swap the back piece, no issue. And it made it more comfortable for palm grip because it would fill out a little bit more of this area in your hand. But the fact that you can break the mouse so easily is not good. That's not good at all. So I can't recommend it, unfortunately. It's not trash, but it is bad. The M42, on the other hand, the M42 is a great mouse. I like the size of it and the shape and how you could make it more flat in the back of the mouse and how you could also make it where it had the taller hump in the back for the back of your palm. M42 was a really nice mouse. And even though it's a bit older, I put it on this list because ExtraFi has an M42 wireless upcoming, I believe. And uh, as long as it doesn't suffer from the same thing that the M4 wireless did, I'm perfectly fine with putting the M42 wireless in the S tier of mice. I know it's gonna be about 70 grams or less is my thought and my theory and hopefully I'm correct. And if that issue is fixed easily, an S tier mouse based on the size, and I think it would be a better option than the Gretza would be for somebody else looking for something that's similar to the uh, final mice. And then we got the MZ1 Zeiss Rail. I really didn't have any complaints about this mouse other than the fact that I really just wanna see a bigger version of this mouse. I liked it a lot. Uh, but, 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 Rocket Jump Ninja, I've told him this. I said, dude, I really want to see a plus version of this mouse, even if it's wired, not wireless yet. But I know that Extra Fine, they got some decent wireless technology now. So if it's wireless, that's even better. But I know that this is like a huge fingertip grip mouse as well. But I like it because it's almost like an XM1 replacement and not necessarily in the same shape or same way, but it was just really comfortable to use and it did give me that kind of vibe that the Endgame Gear XM1 gives me. Since we were talking about the Endgame Gear XM1, well, 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 well. This mouse, isn't it like 70 grams or something? 70 grams, 74 grams, something like that. This thing needs to be weight reduced, okay? We need this thing to be updated. We need it to be modern. We need to weigh less. If it's got a wire at this point, it needs to weigh like 65 grams or less, all right? And don't get me wrong, the coating is great, the mouse switches are great, and you can configure very easily in the software. The software is good, but Endgame Gear hasn't released anything in the past two years except for revamped versions of the XM1, and I'm tired of seeing that. And they showed off the XM1 wireless on Twitter, and I think that was like a month or two ago, and it's not out yet, so, what are you guys doing? Come out with the X and wireless so we can move on with life and make a different mouse with a different shape. Because realistically speaking, it's just boring. I wanted an X and one wireless like a year ago. There was like two or three other X and ones in between the regular X and one and the V2 and the RGB and the uh, X and one R. Actually, no, the X and one R, that was like 2020, I think. That was like the end of 2020. What is going on? Endgame gear, what are you guys doing? What were you doing last year? Where the heck have you been? This mouse has got a fan in it, okay? It's got a fan in it. I think it's like 70 grams. And you know, you can feel the fan. Yeah, it's it's all right. It feels like similar to a Model O. You know what? Uh, this mouse is decent, okay? I'm gonna put it better than the C tier because I think it is gen, like this mouse is genuinely better than all of these mice, in my opinion. But um, it's stiff competition for the mice up here, so it's not even close. But this is from Mars back. It's called the Zephyr, I believe. Uh, let's see here. We got an Asus hot swap mouse. Um, the shape looks bad. I haven't tried this myself, but eh, it, you know, it's whatever. Um, nice hot swap technology. I think they patented it so nobody else could try it. So yeah, I give them props for that being innovative. It doesn't get past the C tier for me, not even close. Even all of these, uh, okay, these two mice, I'd rather use than this one. This mouse, uh, yeah, I would rather use this mouse too than this one. The HSK, uh, not a shot. I wouldn't use the HSK over this one because it's just weird. Oh, I don't know how I forgot to talk about the SteelSeries Prime series of mice. Not just the mini, but the full size SteelSeries Prime, the Prime plus wireless, all that garbage. People like this mouse, I don't wanna call it trash, but 
this mouse is bad. It's not good. The right side of the mouse where you right click, obviously, slants super hard and it's just weird. It's not very ergonomic at all, in my opinion. Like the back of the mouse feels nice. The left side is fine when you're, you know, shooting the click, but when you click the aim button, I feel like my finger literally would like miss the mouse click because it was just such a low and weird like slant. I don't know. I, I didn't like this mouse at all. I thought it was bad. I would never recommend it to anyone. Therefore, it belongs in the tier with the mouse that I would never recommend ever. Speaking of stuff I would never recommend, this Cooler Master mouse, it had a horrible connection. Would never recommend that. I did try the wired one and it was okay, but uh, it was just kind of weird, but I wouldn't pick this mouse over any of these mouse above it. So the MM730, it's okay but there's better ergo mice out there in my opinion speaking of ergo mice we have the ponage ergo mouse which is like 65 or 70 grams if i recall and this mouse was pretty decent but really i want to focus on the m4 wireless for a second and compare it to the ponage mouse and really all of the ponage mice i don't know how and even game missions figured this out too because it's very easy to swap the shells from the orbit from the uh the top piece you just pull it off and you put it back on and your mouse one and two works it wasn't rocket science and i did in like two seconds and it's the exact same way on all the ponage mice too why extra fi couldn't figure that out but ponage figured this out years ago blows my entire mind i i have no idea how that could even be the case i'm not sure but that's what happened, okay? So maybe Extra Fi should buy a Ponage mouse and try it and figure out how to do the uh, shelf swapping, okay? Because I didn't think it was rocket science. And when I tried the Ponage mouse years ago, it was fine. So yeah, I'm moral of the story, I'm really upset that the M4 wireless, I had to put in the bad tier. I wish I could put it higher, but it was just bad. The uh, Ponage Sim 1 is like the Zowly S2 shape, and this one is pretty decent. The Sim 2, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I gotta put this thing in the GOTA tier because this thing is really good, and the fact that this is more or less a slightly bigger Razer Viper Mini, and it's wireless. And I think it also has USB Type-C, and you can swap the shells to change the color and the aesthetic. It's such a good mouse. I've had a great time using it, even though it's too small for me. But for everybody that's looking for a Viper Mini wireless, that's like 75 grams or whatever, 70 grams, it's a really good option, I think. It's expensive at like 100 and something bucks. I think it's 120 bucks. It's pretty good, so no real complaints from me. Continuing the trend with uh, some Ergo Mice, we have the Pulsar X Lite Wireless. Well, X Lite Wireless. I'm gonna be honest, we've seen this mouse more than once over the past year. They've revised it a few times and they got the new X Lite V2 coming out and they got the X Lite V2 Mini coming out. And I know those are gonna be bangers. And the fact that they got the super glide skates that you can buy for them, man, this thing is good. More or less it's a Zowie EC shape, but it weighs less than 60 grams, which is crazy crazy mm, man i gotta put this thing in the s tier i have to I, i'm sorry it's good i haven't had any issues with it it comes in this sick red colorway if you really want one or if they drop like the special edition and it's out the red looks so good and i didn't start liking red in like gaming setups until like this year or not this year but until like 2021 when they came out with the like some renders of like that mouse in red it looked really good and then i got in the custom keyboards so yeah, Pulsar, you guys did a killer job. And speaking of which, we got these Super Glide mouse skates on here. I know this isn't a mouse, but these are some of the best mouse feet in the business. And this is the only pair or uh, set of mouse skates that will end up in a mouse tier list because Temper Glass skates are so good and they're so affordable and such a nice upgrade that you feel tangibly and you never have to replace them. I mean, literally, I'm gonna be using these probably for who knows how long maybe until they crack or something, but I'm not gonna crack if I don't slam my mouse. So I'm good, I'm good. I'm gonna be using these on my G Pro Super Lite for who knows how long. We've got the Zowie C-Series mice, which I felt would be the only right if we talked about those after the Pulsar stuff, but more or less, uh, this is where Zowie finally started weight reducing their mice. And I think most of them land somewhere between like 65 to 75 grams. And I would like them to further weight reduce them, but, um, yeah, I mean, okay, it's okay. And I gotta put it in the S tier because 
because Zowie came up with most of the mouse, not all of them, because there are some new ones on here, but most of the mouse shapes on this list with the exception of uh, most of the Logitech and most of the Razer stuffs. And realistically, the extra five stuff too. Like hey, they all like all three of those companies do a great job at having unique shapes that other companies tend to uh, follow and imitate and whatnot. And Zowie was kind of like the pioneer of like coming out with these shapes. But the C series again is not bad. Updated paracord, uh, optional upgraded PTFE feet. Even though the regular PTFE feet are fine, and uh, some of the mice are weight reduced as well. Moving on from Zowie, we have a uh, Vaxi. And there are Zy, Zygen, Zygen mice. I don't know who the heck came up with that name, but whatever. Anyways, the MP01 and the MP01S. I have the MP01S, and I thought this mouse was fantastic. I would like to see a wireless version, and if a wireless version came out, it would easily be in the S tier. Uh, the wired version is fine but I just wanted to be wireless. So once it's wireless, that's an easy shoe in up to the next level, okay? And then this one, is this the MPO one or is this the other one? I think this is the outset. I didn't pick up this mouse, but the shape looked kind of weird and it's a big ergo. And if the build quality, if the build quality is fine, um, I would put it in the A tier, but it just looks a little weird, but I'm sure that there's like nothing mechanically wrong with the mouse, other than the fact that their scroll wheels are a little stiff, but they're fine, they're super tactile, and I do enjoy that about the Zy uh, the Zygen, Zy whatever it's called, Zygen mice, okay? Then we got the HyperX Pulse Fire Haste Wireless. I mean, this is really the only mouse that HyperX makes that I would even consider in the slightest, so yeah, I would I would put in the S tier. I don't know if I'll put in Goated, because I don't think it's that good, but, it's nice. It's a good mouse, I would say. Um, we've got the GameSense Meta. I tried this mouse. It was okay. It was the Zowie S2 shape or S1, S2, something like that. And it was fine. I didn't think that it was anything that was like in part. I didn't think it was anything like special. Um, but it was okay. Like if I was to pick anything from this category here, it would be in this specific order. It would be G703 the Meta, then the G305. That would be the order that I would pick of mice in the C tier category. That would be mid at best, and the GameSense Meta is one of them. The MVP, I prefer the MVP to the Meta. Um, the MVP is good. The battery life could be better with the RGB on, but in fairness, the RGB looks fantastic, so I typically have it blasting, so I can't really hold the battery life against them because it's kind of my fault, and the, the RGB is bright as heck, so yeah. And I think it has USB Type-C too, which is great. So GameSense Meta, I put that in the A tier, is a pretty good mouse. And I think it's only like 60 bucks, which is a pretty fair deal in my opinion. Then we have the Ninjutsu Origin 1X, which is like a Microsoft IntelliMouse uh, update and whatnot. Uh, KLGM 8.0s, quality side buttons, USB Type-C, long battery life, solid connection. This mouse is pretty good. And the only thing I would wanna see from this is I would like to see it have Bluetooth connectivity at the same exact weight at like 60 grams. That would be great. And then we have the Ninjutsu Katana Super Light. Yeah, Katana Super Light Wireless and the Wired Katana. This mouse is massive and it has magnetic charging and it weighs in at 60 grams. Kind of sucks that it's not like removable like the Alienware was, but uh, the Alienware also blew up, so that is what it is. But you just got to make sure that if you buy the Katana Super Light Wireless, that you don't lose the charging cable because otherwise I don't know how you're going to charge that thing because that that magnetic charger is cool. You just can't lose it. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think for 80 or 90 bucks, whatever it was, it's a pretty fair deal for what you get because it is different, different shape. It's not like really anything else on this list. It's like a bigger G Pro wireless, but like flared out at the bottom. So it doesn't feel the same in the hand. Then we got these red dragon mice. I mean, this mouse was like 10 or $15, I think. Honestly speaking, this thing was garbage. If this thing is $15 and you're telling me that all you got is $15 for a gaming mouse, I'm gonna ask you two questions. Do you have a mouse already? If the answer is yes, I'm gonna tell you keep saving money. If you tell me that all you can afford is $15 for a mouse, then I'm gonna say, that's tough. If you can, ask for more money or go cut some grass or something and save up more money so you don't waste it because you're gonna get this and you're gonna have instant buyer's remorse and you're gonna be pissed 
the whole time. So it's not even worth spending the money. I literally would just keep it and save it for something else. Now, Red Dragon, they do have a, uh, I'm not gonna say better, cause it's not better. They do have another mouse that's more expensive. So would you be saving the $15 from that one garbage mouse to spend $30 on another garbage mouse? The answer is no. If these are all that you have money for, um, you know, let's say you save past the $15 and you got $30 now, save up 10 more dollars and get something that's like in this range of the list because uh, it probably will exist. Like a, a regular Pulse Fire Haste is probably around like 40, 50 bucks, okay? That's gonna be way better than either of these Red Dragon Mice. The Viper uh, uh, Mini, okay, 30 bucks, easy. Way better than both of these mice, just get that. Lastly, we have the glorious Model O, Model O Minus, Model Wireless, Model Minus Wireless. Mm, well, the shapes are very similar to Zowie shapes, but Zowie doesn't make wireless mice. They do have USB Type-C. It's okay. Like, I don't think that I would pick a Model O because it's really just not that comfortable to me. And if the new Viper uh, V2 Pro Ultimate Tournament Edition, whatever the heck they decide to call it, is 57 grams and wireless and around the same price of like $80 to $100, there's no reason that I would buy this over that in the slightest. So, and I would rather use any of these mice, but I take that back, Not maybe not the Basilisk, but I would rather use a Comb Pro Air or XM1 or MP01 or even a game since, uh, what is it? MVP, to be honest, than a Model Wireless. So, oh, the outset too. I'd rather use pretty much all these mice in comparison to this one. So, yeah, there's no, there's not a chance in the world that I will use that mouse. Now in this list, here, a little bit more competitive. I definitely wouldn't want to use the Aerox 3 just because it doesn't work for me, but I would probably use this Ponus Sim over the Model O. So that's just my opinion because I can change the aesthetics and the weight is pretty similar. So I don't know. Well, I, uh, this thing is mid at best. It's not very good in my opinion. I wouldn't use the Model O Wireless in comparison to this mouse and all of these mice up here. Not a chance. For the amount of money that it is, no way. And I got a pay for shipping, forget it. Then we got the Model D. Well, to be honest with you, I'm not using the Model D over any of the other ergos in this list. It's just not happening. So the Model D minus, Model D, the wireless, wireless minus, they're all bad in my opinion. I'd never pick them, ever, ever. And then we got Nacho Customs, okay? Nacho Customs, even if there's a mouse on this tier list that I hate, okay? The mouse that I hate, which, you know, there's a few of them out here. He he can paint it for you and make it look amazing. So there's that. <laughs> if you if you have a mouse that you aren't thrilled with the aesthetics, but you like the way that it looks, send it to Nacho. He'll, uh, he'll hook you up. And these are the final standings for the mouse tier list of early 2022. And uh, I, I mean, I'm pretty happy with this list. I don't think I would make any adjustments as far as where I placed all of these mice. I don't think I would change anything at all. This is where I would put it, and this reflects my uh, current feelings, obviously, on how I feel about all these mice. Not necessarily on the companies, but don't worry. I made another tier list for the companies. We're gonna do that one right now. I'm gonna make this part of the video real quick because some of these companies don't have no business making mice, okay? Like Cooler Master, I don't know who asked them to make mice, but they need to stop, okay? The only good mouse they ever had was that MM711 or 710, whatever it was. That mouse was good, but some people had issues with it anyways. So yeah, no. Endgame gear, mm, before I would have put them in the A tier, I'm gonna have to put them in the mid tier because they basically took in all of last year off. They didn't do anything. And I'm waiting for the XM1 wireless. Realistically speaking, I'm not even gonna switch to it. I'm waiting for the XM1 wireless to come out so I can review it and tell people if you want the XM1, this is the best one to get. Because it probably will be as long as it's not, you know, anything broken or busted. And their build quality is typically very good. But at this point, I need them to make different shapes. That's very important. And they're just not doing it. Or at least they're not telling us that they're doing it. And they're not doing it fast enough. Like, I don't know what's taking them so long to come up with a different mouse shape between all these XM1 refreshes. But they need to get back to work, okay? So EVGA, stop making mice. Forget about it. You tried it. Stop. Nobody's asking for it. G Wolves, if there are something between mid and trash, I probably will put G Wolves here, to be honest. 
even though they do some things that the other companies just aren't doing, but you know, they had the first Logitech G Pro Super Light, technically, and it was wired, but um, and the wireless one never came to fruition, so that's that's tough. And the Hadi S has been plagued with build quality problems for a while. So Final Mouse, gotta give credit where credit's due. They're the only ones really trying to push the market right now. And uh, yeah, I mean, they're doing all right. They're doing pretty good. I, I really can't lie, I'm gonna keep it a buck. And like I said, if they come out with a large mouse, probably gonna buy it. Glorious, um, I'm gonna throw Glorious in the same tier as in-game gear. They're not as bad, because technically they have two mouse shapes and two sizes of each shape, but they haven't made a mouse in over a year that's actually new. So they need to do something with their life, all right? They, they need to work on that. I'm sure that they are, but they need to show us what it is, okay? HyperX, y'all all grouped together, okay? Y'all need to do something with y'all life, come out with some new mice, because uh, y'all ain't doing nothing. Then just so. I'm gonna put y'all a little bit above them because because at least you guys came out with two mice in quick succession last year and that's a pretty big feat and both of them were bangers okay one of them was wireless one of them was wire and then the wired one or wireless version of the wired one came out so that's two versions of one mouse and a and two wireless mice that's a pretty good ratio in my opinion that's 66 percent wireless that's good it's very good and they're all reasonably priced logitech well Logitech, even though I would want to put you higher, you guys haven't been doing jack when it comes to gaming mice recently, okay? So last year you guys re-released the G305 in some different colors, and you re-released the regular G Pro Wireless in uh, that League of Legends cool looking color scheme. What the heck, bro? Like who asked for that? I don't, I don't understand, who asked for that? Why didn't you do it with the Super Leg? That makes zero sense to me. I would love to put you higher than the B tier if you came out with new shapes or at least before you come out with any new shapes, refresh all your old ones. You did it with the Shroud Edition because, you know, Shroud probably asked you guys for years to do it. But guys, what are you doing? NZXT, y'all don't have no business making mice. I've seen those reviews that came out the other day on those mice and it didn't look good. Just quit while you're ahead. Pulsar. Y'all dropped glass mouse skates and some banger editions of the regular X Lite, and now we got a symmetrical mouse on the way. Nice job. Keep going, keep doing what you're doing. You're fighting a good fight. Ponage, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. At least you can customize the aesthetics of quite a few different shapes of mice. Ponage, they're doing a good job. They're fighting a good fight, okay? They're doing all right. I'm gonna have to give it to them. They doing decent. And then we got Rockat. Well, Rockat, y'all slacking too, okay? You came out with uh, a Cone Pro Pure, something crazy like that, and it looked wild. Not for me, but you know, you try. But where is the other mice, okay? Where's the Burst Pro Wireless? And what else y'all working on? Like y'all gotta drop something else. Come on now, come on. And we got Razor. Razor, Razor fighting a good fight, okay? They got the new one coming out. Even though we want them to make a Viper Mini wireless. They, they still dropped a couple mice last year, right? And they came out with something, I think, maybe. But I don't know, but I can tell that, I think I got a good feel. I got a good feel. I think Razor is gonna drop like two or three mice this year that I think are gonna be spicy. I can't wait to see them. Razor, y'all fighting a good fight. Keep doing what you're doing and drop some mice this year. Don't prove me wrong. I want to see at least two releases this year. Steel Series. Mm, um, Steel Series. See, look, y'all ratio cut looking kind of bad to me, man. All the mice y'all released like over the past few years, those mice suck. They really do. I I don't know what new Steel Series mouse I would recommend. No, no. The Aerox is okay, but that doesn't mean I recommend it because I don't like it. The Prime. Trash. The Rival 5, that was a joke. Absolutely not. Yeah, no idea. No idea what you guys are doing. Vaxi, um, you know what? Vaxi, you guys got a few, you got two or three mice now. You got the MPO1S, you got the outset, you got the regular MPO1. Is there an outset smaller edition? Maybe not. Start working out wireless. I'm sure that you are. But keep it going. Keep fighting a good fight. Y'all doing good. You know, you're on your way to working your way up, okay? So keep doing what you're doing. We want to see more. Zowie, 
Zowie is doing right now what I wish Logitech would do, which they're making uh, adjustments to their mice. They got better skates available. They're got lighter weight mice coming out with different size options, all the same shapes that we knew before, but they got different sizes, new updated weights and better paracore and better feet. I got to give it to Zowie. All right. Okay. Okay, you can move on to the S tier pretty easily if you came out with even lighter weight mice and wireless. So get back to work. I want to see the wireless mice come soon. Thank you. And then that leaves ExtraFi. Well, ExtraFi is trying. And I got to give them credit for trying. So yeah, they're doing okay. They're doing okay. They're doing really well considering the mice that they released last year. I like the shapes. They were unique and they were new, not some that we've seen before. Uh, the, M the M4 was their own design the first time. So I give them that for updating it and making it wireless. Even though it wasn't good, they still tried. And the MZ1 was a banger. So in the M42 update coming wireless, that sound pretty good to me. I just can't wait to see if they drop another mouse after the M42 wireless this year or something else. I'm curious to see what Extra 5 is going to do. I'm excited. But all right, you guys, that is going to be it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you guys for sitting through this uh, extra long video. For my guys and gals that stayed till the end of the video, comment Sip of Ghost, okay? Sip of Ghost, even though I'm not sponsored, I just they've started selling this at gas stations in my area now and it's really good like if you guys have this i highly recommend you trying out this ghost energy stuff it's really good quite tasty i've been drinking it a lot but comment sip of ghost in the comment section if you guys stay to the end of the video so i can see how many of you guys did because i know this video is long i know it's long but uh i appreciate you guys watching the whole thing and let's have a discussion in the comment section as well what do you guys think uh, would be different in your version of the tier list? Would you rank any mice higher or lower based on what I said? And how do you feel about the mouse companies as well? But uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.